In our last episode, we arrived at Kaisar's camp at the top of Fortification Hill and pledged our allegiance to Kaisar. After destroying House Securitron army in the secret vault beneath the fort, Kaisar sent us on our next mission to kill Robert House. He didn't really care how we go about it, he just wants it done. And so we return to the New Vegas Strip and enter the Lucky 38 Casino. Doing this stealthily is difficult. After all, it's impossible to get this far without angering Robert House. By destroying his Securitron army, we become his enemy. And so when we arrive at the penthouse, House's Securitrons immediately attack. Now, since I was playing this on a lower level character, since I had to go back in time before I killed Wulpe Zenkulta, this battle proved to be very difficult. This character was also low on ammunition. So I had to run around strategically placing mines, throwing plasma grenades, and using some plasma rifle I picked up to take them all out. After many deaths, I was finally successful at clearing the primary room, but we see more red lines on our compass. To find the others, we have to go down the stairs to the ground floor and access the terminal on the northern wall. This allows us to open a hidden door to a nearby antechamber. As the door slides aside, we see more Securitrons in the antechamber. I cleared these the same way I cleared the main room. Strategic use of mines and my plasma rifle, and then a quick cleanup with my mysterious magnet. In this room, we see that the Securitrons were guarding a nearby elevator. This is the elevator to the control room, and we can use the terminal to unlock the elevator. In this room, there is another terminal in the back. It says, Welcome Mr. House, but I didn't see any text here, so I'm not sure what this is for. When ready, we can take the elevator to the control room. Now, spoiler alert, we're about to discover the true nature of Robert House. So if you don't want your gameplay spoiled, you may want to skip ahead. When the elevator doors open, we appear on a catwalk in a dark industrial basement. At the end of the catwalk, we see a terminal and a console and some sort of pod at the very end. Peering inside, we see a body. Is that a corpse? But no, wait. Peering closer, it's still breathing. Its fingernails and hair and beard are hideously long. Robert House is not a robot. He is not AI. He's human, kept alive by this machine for over 200 years. We find no option to interact with this pod, so heading back to the terminal inside the console, we find one option to unseal the life support chamber. Warning, microbial infection risk. Proceed to please Kaisar, yes. Have you done this? Centuries of preparation. So much good undone. I don't like you. Fool to let personalities derail future of mankind. Stupid. Nothing personal, House. It's just business. If personal gain, what you sought, should have done as asked. By Kaisar's command, you will die. Slavery, the future of mankind. What have you done? We have a few ways to respond. We can regret our actions and say, Oh no! It's okay, Mr. House. I'll put you back in your tube. Good as new. No! Ruined everything! Exposed germs! A year of life! If at most, I have nothing to say. 
heading back to the console. Maybe we can find a way to undo what we've done. But we only see two options. One is to sterilize the life support chamber. Yeah, maybe this will get rid of all those nasty microbes. After choosing this option, we get a warning. Lethal shock risk if life support chamber is occupied. Proceed. Uh, uh, Mr. House is a hardy guy surviving these 200 years. I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not fine. He's not fine. And his bed is a little twitchy. Or we can say, you won't be able to control anything, but I'll let you live. No! Don't disable Cerebro! I'd rather be killed! Just kill me! Is that an Aliens reference? <laughs> Heading back to the console, we can choose the other option to disable the cerebral interface. We're gonna let him live, but he'll no longer be able to control the Securitrons on the strip. Warning! Life support chamber occupant will be unable to control subsystems. Proceed? Oh yes. Very yes. And he doesn't explode. He just sort of sits there in his little T-Rex pose, staring off wearing a vacant expression. We can take the opportunity to get a better look at this guy. He's completely comatose. We can't talk with him. He doesn't even tell us to go away. He just sits here twitching for the rest of the game. Or we can say, time for you to die, Mr. House. May there be a hell for you. A Tartarus bleak unending. And as a good representative of the Legion, we can pull out a trusty machete to do the deed. If we do so, we can advance one step to earning the challenge you don't belong in this world which requires us to kill abominations with bladed weapons, including machetes. Robert House, being over 200 years old, counts as an abomination. No matter how we choose to get rid of Mr. House, the next time we step outside the Lucky 38, we hear the following broadcasted over the strip. I, Robert Edwin House, am deceased. Please approach a Securitron and take one of the printed obituaries. But we didn't have to approach a Securitron to get his obituary. As soon as we kill him in the Lucky 38, one is added to our inventory. His obituary is titled, A Tragedy Has Befallen All of Mankind. He certainly has a high opinion of himself. Robert Edwin House, 261 years old, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the New Vegas Strip, industrialist and technologist, founder, president, and CEO of the multi-billion dollar pre-war robotics and software corporation, Robco Industries, has died. Oh, okay, hold on, taking a breath here. Generally recognized by Mr. House to be mankind's only hope for long-term survival, Mr. House's passing may well sound the death knell for the entire human race. Lost forever is his bounty of knowledge concerning human longevity, the depth and breadth of which could, as he was apt to say, fill several textbooks. He was not exaggerating. Though he did not achieve his goal of functional immortality, let us not forget that he died at the age of 261. How many people do that? I mean, come on. Did he write this? Surely he couldn't have written this. That doesn't sound like him. Also lost forever are House's singular personality, force of will, vision, and leadership ability. The probability of an equally capable figure emerging from the current human population to lead mankind to a future of equivalent quality is less than 0.000112% by objective measures too complex to detail in this obituary. Personality and Force of Will Born June 25th, 2020, House was orphaned at an early age when his parents died in a freak accident, autogyro lightning. Though cheated of his inheritance, House attended the prestigious Institute in Massachusetts, yes, that institute, and founded Robco Industries on his 22nd birthday. Within five years, it was one of the most profitable corporations on Earth. Vision. 
By 2065, House was certain that an atomic war would soon devastate the planet. At great personal expense, he developed technologies to ensure the structural integrity of the city of Las Vegas, as it was known at the time. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted the city. Mr. House defeated them all. Talk about vision! He's fudging the numbers here a bit. In our previous series on House, when we talked with him face to face, he confessed that he intercepted most of the warheads, but a few still got through. Leadership Mr. House survived the war, of course, and would later recruit the three families, negotiate the Treaty of New Vegas, and rebuild the Vegas Strip. While these achievements yielded many immediate benefits, they were all part of House's master plan to reignite mankind's quest for technological advancement, a plan without which the human race has nowhere to go, and nowhere to turn. Note to self, we'll revise and finish this up later, have set the age at death to update automatically. The obituary makes salient points, but pearls before swine, of course. Let's hope the ingrates never have cause to read it. Who knows how many of them are even literate? By pearls before swine, he's referring to a quote from Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 6, in which Jesus says, Don't give what's holy to dogs, and don't cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, turn, and tear you into pieces. When used today, it means that you might have something valuable that other people can't appreciate, so there's no sense sharing your valuables with people who can't understand its value. Here, Robert House is saying that he recognizes how important his contributions to humanity were, but that this obituary may be a wasted effort, written for people who may not be able to appreciate him or even be able to read it. He may be casting his pearls before swine. I am so glad they included this in the game, but there are parts of it that don't read like House, especially that, I mean, come on, bit. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the way House would even talk. At any rate, once the deed is done, we can return to Kaisar atop Fortification Hill. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? With Mr. House out of the way, I can focus on smoothing out a few lingering complications elsewhere in the Mojave. First up are the boomers of Nellis Air Force Base, a tribe so reclusive it lobs artillery shells at anyone who comes near their settlement. I want you to offer them an alliance with my legion. My terms are simple. Target their guns against the NCR side of the dam when I assault it, and they can keep their freedom. If you find they aren't amenable to this offer, destroy them. The boomers, eh? All right, well, I have some questions to ask first. Even with the boomers to deal with, you have questions? Tell me about the boomers. The boomers settled at the old air base northeast of Vegas many years ago. No one knows exactly how long it's been. It may be that no one's traded with them or even spoken to them that entire time. If so, they're sitting on one hell of a stockpile of ammunition. Do you know anything about their society? My scouts have seen people moving around the base. The perimeter is guarded, with spotters and towers directing the artillery fire. They must have extraordinary vision. Some of my scouts were targeted at extreme distances. So no, I can't tell you what to expect inside the base. No one's been inside it, except them. What did you know about Mr. House before you sent me to kill him? I know he's dead. I know he's no longer a factor. That's all I need to know. Losers don't matter in the history books. He's a fucking footnote. Oh, with that philosophy, it's understandable then why he wants to win at Hoover Dam, because last time he lost. At the moment, he's still a loser. All right, Kaisar, I'll handle the boomers for you. Good. Your first challenge will be to reach their settlement without getting blown up. After that, should be easy. I completely covered the boomers in a separate video that you can watch here, so I won't go over everything here. But we have two options to complete this quest. Once we infiltrate the compound, we can, of course, assassinate their leadership. And we'll start with their tribe mother, Pearl. <laughs> Once she's dead, we must kill the final elder, Loyal. We often find him working inside the Nellis Air Force Base hangar. He hangs out with the young couple, Jack and Janet, so we'll likely have to kill them too.
Once Pearl and Loyal are dead, we can head back to the fort to inform Kaisar. Have you brought news of the Boomers? I had to wipe out the Boomers' leadership. A perfectly satisfactory way of resolving the threat they posed. It's impressive that you made it through their barrage. The other way is to secure the loyalty of the Boomers, but to do so, we must complete all of their quests. This includes listening to a short presentation on the history of the Boomers, where we get to observe a beautiful mural. Killing some ants and their queen inside a generator room for the Nellis Array. Incidentally, it's here that we find the grenade rifle Thump Thump, a pretty powerful weapon that's going to save my skin later in this series. Then we have to repair the Nellis Array by salvaging some solar panels from Helios 1. And finally, we need to head to Lake Mead and use ballasts to raise a B-29 bomber from the bottom of the lake. Once we've completed every task, the next time we check in with Pearl, she says, You are a trusted friend of us all. If there is ever a way for us to help you, child, tell me, and I will make it so. And it is here that we can ask her about the howitzer firing mechanisms we need to complete Lucius's side quest. You may find one in the workshop. You're a friend to the tribe, so... I trust it will not find its way into the wrong hands. Thanks, Pearl. By the way, there may be a battle in the near future at Hoover Dam. Can you offer any assistance? Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. And with that, we secure the help of the Boomers, who will now use their B-29 bomber against the NCR when the time comes. To find the howitzer mechanism, we head northwest of Pearl's cabin towards the museum and Loyal's house. Sandwiched between them, we find the Nellis workshop. And inside a locker at the very back of the workshop is a gun cabinet wherein we find the howitzer firing mechanism. With the mechanism in hand, and with the Boomer's loyalty secured, we can head back to the fort and check in with Kaisar. Have you brought news of the Boomers? I've won over the Boomers. They'll do as I say. Good. Make sure they help the Legion when the time comes. As for your next assignment... Or if we secured their loyalty long before we ever started working for the Legion, we can say, I've already won over the Boomers. They'll do as I say. Is that so? You are good, aren't you? If the Boomers will toe the line, I can focus on other preparations. But not without first rewarding your initiative. Now, moving on. I want you to forge an alliance between Kaisar's Legion and the White Glove Society. They used to be cannibals. I expect that information can be used to manipulate them. Go to... Oh, oh, God damn it! Whoa! We can pass a 40 medicine check to ask, is this the first time you've experienced sudden onset headaches? Never this <coughs> bad before. He has the same response to the bottom two options. We can say, uh, are you all right? Fuck this. I'm going to lie down. Come back later. Tomorrow. No matter which option we choose, after securing the help of the Boomers, we gain NCR infamy. We're one step away from being shunned by the NCR. But now I'm really worried about Kaisar. He said to leave him alone, but we can ignore his instructions and head into his tent. God damn it, go away! Come back when I've had some sleep. What were you saying about the White Glove Society again? Disturb me again, and I'll have you killed. You know what? I just feel like poking this sleeping bear. Hey, Kaisar. You awake, man? Hey, wake up. I want to talk. What's up? Hey, what you doing? You awake? Ugh, I warned you not to bother me! Praetorians, kill this asshole! <laughs> but since we're trying to side with the Legion, we'll do our best not to provoke this man. Instead of choosing the other options, we can pass a 40 medicine check to say, You're limping when you walk. How long has that been going on? A week. Maybe two. It doesn't matter. Disturb me again, and I'll have you killed. We'll let him rest for now. Well, after watching that extraordinary display, we can head outside the tent and install the firing mechanism inside the howitzer. You repaired the howitzer. The NCR will be in for a surprise. With the howitzer repaired, we can head back inside the tent to chat with Lucius. And we see that by the time we got back here, Kaiser's feeling better. He's sitting on his throne. Checking in with Lucius at the strategy table. Yes. 
Do you have something to report? Your howitzer is operational. Well done. It will be very useful in the coming battle against the snipers the NCR will no doubt have hidden in the hills near the dam. We get to see the effects of this repaired howitzer in the final battle for Hoover Dam. I'll be sure to point it out at the time. But now that Kaisar is feeling a little better, we can try to find out more about this White Glove Society. The last time we met, I believe we were talking about the White Glove Society. Yeah, the last time we met, your head seemed ready to explode. I get headaches every once in a while, so what? Anyway, we have other matters to discuss. We can pass a 40 medicine check to say, I know you're trying to brush this off, but I'm concerned your headaches might be symptoms of a more serious condition. I appreciate your concern, but I'm in excellent health. And we have other matters to discuss. If you say so. Well, yeah, as we were discussing before your incident, you said I should forge an alliance between the White Gloves and your Legion. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? Well, no, I haven't even visited them yet. Still working on it, but I have some questions. Even with the White Glove Society to deal with, you have questions? What can you tell me about them? There were tales once of a cannibal tribe near Vegas. One that hid itself in a cavern far below ground, hunting men as prey above. The scouts I occasionally sent west many years ago reported these tales, but never had contact. Well, except the ones who went missing, perhaps. There are rumors that the White Gloves might be this lost tribe. Maybe you can help them find themselves. How could savage cannibals run the Ultralux? Culture is an odd thing. Sometimes a tribe grows tired of its identity, grabs for an opportunity to reimagine itself. The tribe becomes its own antithesis. Everything flips to the opposite polarity. Dialectics tells us that this can't last. There has to be a synthesis, the final sorting out. All right, I'll take care of it. Then get to it. To complete this task, we head back to the Strip. We explored the Ultralux Casino, discovered that the White Glove Society were cannibals, and explored every ending possible in my three-part series on the White Glove Society and the Ultralux Casino that you can watch here. But to sum up, this task is relatively simple. The only way to succeed is to resolve things here at the Ultralux in Mortimer's favor. We have to revert the White Glove Society back to cannibalism. But there is a way to really mess this up. If we go into the Gourmand and talk with Marjorie before completing Mortimer's quest, we find an option there to say, Kaisar wishes to extend your society an offer of alliance with his legion. Tell your ruler we have no interest in such ties. Caesar's legion is a collection of unclean barbarians. Any time the White Glove Society is mentioned in the same breath, it sullies our good name. As much as Mortimer and some of the other members have tried to convince me otherwise, I will not have us seen as savages. But she says no, and we fail at our task. If we fail, all we can do is head back to the fort and tell Kaisar. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? There's no way the White Glove Society will be cannibals again. I have already seen to that. You've been resourceful in the past. Why are you a failure now? You'd best step up your performance with this next assignment. Thankfully, there are no repercussions for failing Kaisar this time around, but we miss out on the Legion fame. Alternatively, we can succeed at this task by telling Mortimer that we know all about his cannibalism and we're okay with it. Good. And you know what it is to be discreet in matters of... nutrition. We then have to complete the quest in his favor in any of the ways that I showed off in detail in my White Glove Society series. In this example, we killed Ted Gunderson, framed his father for murder, reported him to strip security, and then had him dragged away. So the Baron has slaughtered his last brawn. How delightful. Once we hear these words from Mortimer, we know that we completed the quest correctly, but we must now wait 24 hours until after the seven o'clock dinner, the dinner where the White Glove Society reverts back to cannibalism. After the dinner ends and they've tasted human flesh, we can then go back to the Gourmand, and this time when we ask Marjorie to ally with the Legion, she says, I don't care for their incivility or the hodgepodge of sporting equipment that passes for fashion with them. Nevertheless, I have heard Caesar has a stately dignity about him, and I understand his policies will agree with our new menu. I prefer Mr. House, of course, but he may not be around forever. 
and the NCR will surely set back our cuisine. Tell your Mr. Caesar we are with him. Still a bit snobby, but at least she's on board. And with that success under our belt, we can check in with Kaisar. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? The White Glove Society has agreed to an alliance with Kaisar's Legion. Good. It will be valuable to have allies on the Strip when Hoover Dam is taken. Now, as for your next assignment, I want you to destroy the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's not a full-strength chapter, mind you. The profligates... Uh... Uh... He has the same response to both of these options. We can say, Are you okay? Hello? We're talking here. Hmm. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Brotherhood. Them. You just blanked out for several seconds. It, it's nothing. Just, just tired, that's all. We can pass a medicine check of 40 to say, Kaisar, you just experienced an absence seizure. Was this the first time? I don't, I don't know. There ha- have been a couple. My lord, I'm concerned you may have a serious neurological condition. Don't. I, just leave it alone. I'm, I'm fine. Now, what was I saying? Right. All right, well, where do I find the Brotherhood? How do I destroy them? Look for the Brotherhood's bunker around, uh, Hidden Valley. My, my scouts... Saw some things. I'm going to bed. We'll talk later. Your scout saw some things? This is not good. Something is wrong with Kaisar, but he won't talk with us about it. And after securing the allegiance of the White Glove Society, we permanently become shunned by the NCR. There's no going back. After this point, we have to wear a disguise whenever we travel through NCR territory. Kaisar wants us to head to Hidden Valley to take care of the Brotherhood of Steel. We'll destroy the Brotherhood and discover exactly what's wrong with Kaisar in our next episode. If you don't want to miss the story, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop. The profligate's days are numbered. This beautiful post-apocalyptic portrait is available on shirts in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. It also comes in a wide array of colors, and you can find the design on a bunch of other products besides shirts, smartphone cases, mugs, posters, pillows, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this week with the next episode. I'd like a large atomic shake and a double Brahmin burger. And easy on the agave sauce this time. We gave you a password, Veronica. It's for your safety. I know where you live, Ramos. Open up. Pete's sake. Opening up. Welcome back.